today. I'm gonna enter a world of pain and let my stag beetle bite me to see how bad it really is in one, two, three. Oh! Okay. Yep, I was emulating Coyote Peterson and Mr. Beast. But the reason why I'm doing this video is not just for that juicy YouTube content. If you're a long-standing viewer of this channel, then you might have guessed one of the reasons is edutainment, which is correct. But you might be surprised to hear this. I'm honestly a little scared of stag beetles. When I was a young kid, one of my first beetles was this awesome stag beetle that I bought with my allowance and it came in this small plastic cup, so obviously it had to be moved into a proper cage. Now, my dad was worried that I'll get pinched, so he decided he was going to move the beetle, but little did he know that he was going to become a victim that day. I've always seen my dad as a strong guy, like he's a marine. There's not a lot that can take them down, but that day he gave a loud enough yell that an intergalactic horden would have been able to hear him and it kind of traumatized me <laughs> and scared me away from stag beetles. But now that I'm older, I've grown to accept and respectfully fear stag beetles, but there's still a primordial fear whispering in my ears that I want to overcome. Since I raise beetles, I know that I'll inevitably get pinched someday, especially as I take more under my care, but my worry has evolved into whether my reactions will get the better of me. Oh, I'm the kind of person that'll flip out to any jump scare, no matter how choreographed. So I'm worried that if I get pinched, I might ah. accidentally fling the beetle across the room and hurt it. But I'm getting over that paranoia and diving headfirst into the maws of the metallifer. But before that, to psych myself up and hopefully calm my nerves, I want to test how strong his bite is on one of my gacha toys. So I found the most humanoid thing I own and enticed the stag. Oh my goodness. Oh, he, he does not like Koi Man. Holy cow, he's holding on tight. We're doing a little tug of war. Jesus Christ. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. One, two, three. Ooh, he's actually super docile. I thought he was gonna clamp down. He's been so aggressive recently, but... Oh, okay, that hurt. He's pretty chill. Oh, you'll find out why by the end of this video. What a nice guy. I think here is the scary part, though. Oh, yeah. Come on, buddy, you can do it. You can... Take out all your pent-up rage against me. Okay, that hurt. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right, um... Glad he released immediately. I think the shock of it was the more scary part of this whole exercise. I mean, it did scratch my finger. Now for all you sadists out there that wants to also see me get pinched by a female beetle, I say no for two reasons. One is, what's the point if there's research showing that the males of Cyclomatus metallifer has three times the bite force of a female, which is honestly incredible thinking about how physics works. Let's take these pair of scissors for an example. If I were to equate this to these beetles, cutting at the very end is like how males pinch, while cutting close to the fulcrum is how females pinch. And we all know that the easiest way to cut things is by getting it as close to the middle as possible. So female beetles with smaller jaws should be able to generate more force, right? Now, when we look at physical differences between male and female stags, the biggest focus is on the body size and jaws, but the key to the male's strength lies completely in its trapezoidal head. In that same study that I referenced for bite strength, they took CT scans of these beetles to find out how they're able to produce such a powerful pinch. Maybe it's not a surprise, but its entire head is modified to generate that much force. First of all, they have larger muscles to close the jaw, but more interestingly, they have larger input levers which compensates for their longer jaw lever. In scissor terms, this means that a female jaw is like cutting closest to the fulcrum while also holding the scissors closest to the middle, while males is far for both. 
So to account for both larger muscles and input levers, the head of the cyclomatus must form more of a trapezoid to align the muscles and jaws perfectly. Pretty amazing, right? But wait, just like an infomercial, there's more. Because their jaws are so big and they're capable of creating so much force, one has to ask themselves, how do these beetles prevent themselves from accidentally breaking its own pincers? Like this poor analogy of dry spaghetti. Well, in another study by the same authors, they investigated just that. Through scanning electron microscopy, they are able to take these amazing images showing little sensors speckled around the jaw with higher frequencies in areas with the most speculated stress. Given the intentional presence of these mechanoreceptors, it's thought that these beetles are able to modulate their strength during fights to maximize their chances of victory and minimize the harm to themselves. Okay, sorry. I got incredibly sidetracked by the engineering marvels of this beetle. But let me tell you the second reason why I'm not going to get bit by the female. And that's simply because I'm a wimp. <laughs> like those females use their pincers to gnaw through wood and my hands aren't built like Steve's. No way I'm getting bit by a female on purpose. I'm gonna take my small victory with the male even if it wasn't really using its full strength. Take that as a minor victory towards my fear. Just baby steps for now. As a conclusion to this video and an even bigger demonstration of how much of a wimp I am, I leave you viewers with one last fascinating fact. I deliberately let myself get bitten, if you can even call it that, at the tip of their jaw because that's the spot where they exert the least force. Now the reason why is a whole other video on its own, but maybe when I'm ready, I'll level up and go for the most dangerous part. Well. You made it to the end of the video, and to that I say thank you and also sorry that this was slightly clickbait, but I hope you learned a thing or two about these amazing stag beetles. Like, comment, subscribe, you know all that YouTube jazz, but most of all, have a great rest of your day.